Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku with the La Palma erupting Cumbre Vieja volcano update on Sunday evening, September 19th, around 8 p.m. Mountain Time, 2021. Now, the, the volcano Cumbre Vieja on La Palma has been erupting now for well over eight hours. Hours of powers. You can see the. Uh, this is about two hours ago. Some of the lava spread. And we have live coverage for you as well with full analysis of the eruption and predictions moving forward. Now, the La Palma volcano eruption update begins with lava flows cutting roads, threatening inhabited areas, and evacuations being ordered. Now, according to Volcano Discovery, and more details emerging from multiple media covering the eruption in great detail. At 4.33 p.m. today, a second fissure opened 100 meters above the first one that opened at 3.15 p.m. The Civil Guard announced 5,000 to 10,000 people will be evacuated, many of them tourists. And we'll get to that. And a few homes are now being destroyed as I speak. Now, a volcano on Spain's Atlantic Ocean island of La Palma erupted Sunday after a week-long buildup of seismic activity prompting authorities to evacuate thousands as lava flow destroyed isolated homes and threatened to reach the coast. The lava has reached the coast by now. New eruptions are continuing into the night, and there is an increase in activity and pressure on the main vent. The Canary Islands Volcanology Institute reported the eruption on Cumbre Vieja, which er last erupted in 1971. Huge plumes of black and white smoke shot out from a point of the volcanic ridge, which scientists had been closely watching following the accumulated molten lava below the surface and days of small earthquakes. Authorities immediately evacuated more than 1,000 people, but Spain's civil guard said it may need to evacuate up to 10,000 total. Now, the population of Lampama is about 85,000, is one of eight islands in Spain's Canary Islands archipelago, and a 4.2 magnitude, which was downgraded, was kicked off the event which took place in an area known as Cabiza de Vaca on the western slope of a ridge that descends to the coast. Now, tinges of red could be seen at the bottom of black jets that shot into the air that we reported on early this morning uh, when the event occurred. Now, shortly after the initial explosion rocked the area, one black lava flow with a burning tip immediately slid towards the villages of El Paso. And the mayor, Sergio Rodriguez, said 300 people were in immediate danger and were evacuated. Roads were closed and authorities were urged the curious not to approach the area. Lava eventually reached homes, causing at least one chalet tower to crumble. Authorities warned that the lava flows could also threaten the munis municipalities of El Paraiso, El Cala, and surrounding areas. Charlotte Martin was at an agricultural plot her family has at Todoque, just downhill from the eruption site when she heard a huge explosion. When we saw the column of smoke, we thought it could not be real, but it kept growing, and we knew we had to get out of there. She told the some, some something or other. <laughs> you should not keep, come near the eruption site where the lava is flowing, said the authorities. Now, of course you shouldn't. Now, quickly, let's uh, look at the earthquake periodicity today in the last 24 hours, and there have been quite a few. And the earthquakes are trending up into higher magnitude as opposed to lower magnitude, where we have 85 quakes happening between two and three magnitude in the last 24 hours, five quakes above three magnitude, and 81 quakes from two magnitude and less. So 170 quakes today, and the quakes are dropping off the map. And we'll, we'll quickly show you what's happening here. So the eruption began right as this reached the surface here, and all of these major M2s and 3s were happening at the surface. This is the beginning of the eruption and the spreading of the fissure. Things have quieted down seismically. But the bad news is that seismicity at depth here at 25 kilometers with larger activity at 15 and 10 are showing signs that this a uh, volcanic event may be being fed from at depth, which means a long-lasting eruption, which is typical of eruptions in this area. The last eruption here lasted for about 30 days, and that's the 1971 eruption. The eruption prior to that, 1941, lasted for about 45 days. And the El Hierro eruption, the most recent one back in 2011 or 2010, lasted for months. So the eruptive nature of the volcanoes and the fissure eruptions in this region are long-lasting. Not as long-lasting as the Iceland eruption, which we'll get to in a minute, but this one should last for weeks 
at minimum, 30 days on the average. And the last eruption was 30 days. The eruption before that, 45. The most recent eruption, four months. So that's what we have to look forward to. Now we're going to bring it over to the live stream, and we're going to check out some sound of the actual volcano erupting live. You can see here on the right some new venting happening. That's bad news. This is the main vent, and now we have a secondary lower vent uh, that just appeared recently and is getting quite active. But the main vent itself is spewing strombolian activity. That's what we're looking at here. Again, this is not a stratocone volcano. This is a type of cinder cone and a fissure, effusive cinder cone type volcano. It's called the static cinder cone, I believe, and it's effusive type, which is strombolian, which means it sprays lava and sometimes explodes, which is exactly what it's doing, spraying lava and sometimes exploding. And it is quite spectacular. Now, the problem is this is a pretty viscous lava moving at a high speed. It's already reached the ocean. So people on this island are going to be, depending on the wind pattern, maybe suffering from some very toxic gases from the lays being created by that lava. But this is an ongoing event which has lots of staying power. Based on historical documentation, we know that these types of events last for weeks. So the, there's more fireworks ahead. And we're going to be keeping a close eye on it for you. All of those people with worries of, of this immediately creating a mega tsunami, the chances of that are extremely small. The amount of people watching this island, there will be warning if anything begins to slump. It should be the people in this region most worried about the effects of this volcano, period. Now, the Canary Islands is also home to pyramids. Did you guys know that? And here's, in fact, one on Tenerife, a neighboring island. And in Tenerife and La Palma in the Canary Islands, there are pyramid-like constructions that are a mystery. No one has proved satisfactorily when they were built or by who. And an ongoing debate has been going on for many years with several theories, theories put forward. Now, the Guanches. Now, these are... Eastern European mummies are potentially, the Guanches are potentially the people who built these pyramids and they are, the there are mummies on the, uh, in the Canary Islands of these people that had red hair and they're potentially Cro-Magnon. So that is very interesting history that we can bring to you uh, tonight. Now, Iceland's volcanic eruption, the one at Fagradalsfall is the longest in a half a century and it is still ongoing. Um, Iceland's sixth volcanic eruption in 20 years is already longer than the preceding one at Holurun in the center of the island, which lasted from the end of August 24th to the end of February 2015. Six months is a reasonably long eruption, volcanologist Thor Thordeson said. And almost 143 million cubic meters of lava has been spewed out so far. And it is, well, there's no signs of stopping. On top of that, there is more seismic activity at Ashja and Grimsbotten. So we're waiting for another different type of volcano, a larger volcanic explosion to happen on Iceland in the coming days or weeks. And we're keeping a close eye on that for you as well. Now the shocking truth, the fully vaxxed are 27 times more likely to get COVID compared to people with natural immunity. A new Israeli study finds. This is breaking news coming out in 24 hours. Check it out. We'll leave you links to all this information below. Now, La Palma, let's talk about the uh, eruptive history and let's get let's dive deep into it. Um, and here are some of the most, there's the San Juan fissures, the, the Bariqua, the Hoyo Negra, Negro, and some other fissures. And these are all coming from the Cumbre Vieja. And let's get to the eruptive history. There we are. And here we can see the Teneguilla eruption back in 1971 was VEI-2, which lasted for about 30 days. The 1949 eruption, which lasted for 45 days, was San Juan, Lano de Blanco, Hoyo, and Negro. And we were just looking at some of that uh, information. Where was that? The latest activity reports. Yeah. So here are some of those regions. And that is exactly the area that's erupting up here in the top left. Could be the San Juan fissures or the Hoyo Negro. We'll pinpoint that for you uh, in tomorrow's update if you stick with us. And let's over come over here to uh, 
just put your mind at ease. And this is the Wikipedia on the mega tsunami and future threats. So if you want to put your mind at ease, you can come read this section. And it all has to do with the criticism. There is controversy, however, about the threat pre presented by the Cumbre Vieja. Current indications are that recent landslides may have been gradual and therefore may not have generated tsunamis unless they increased in magnitude. Studies of possible local mega tsunamis in Hawaiian islands draw distinctions between the tsunami wave periods caused by landslides and subduction zone earthquakes, arguing that similar collapses in Hawaii would not endanger Asians or North American coastlines. Now, according to many other people here and studies, um, a 2008 paper, for instance, looked into the very worst case scenario, the most massive slide that could happen. Though unlikely and probably impossible right now, with the present day geology, they find that wave heights in the range of just 10 to 188 meters if the Canary Islands in the Canary Islands themselves, but the waves interfere and dissipate as they head out into the Atlantic. So there's no threat to the eastern seaboard of the Atlantic. And they also predict heights of 40 meters in some nearby island systems. But for continents, the worst effects of northern Brazil would be a 45 foot wave and, and much smaller. And that's based on the worst case scenario, which according to many scientists, especially those in the Netherlands, um, that the western flank of the Cumbre Vieja was conjecture as potentially failing and falling into the Atlantic Ocean to create a hypothesis, La Palma mega tsunami, which is both too small in mass and volume and too far stable to break away in the next 10,000 years. So there's a lot of data suggesting that it's impossible for any of this to occur. So you do your own homework. And that's all we're going to say tonight. And that's a boom to real knowledge. Diving deep and getting all the viewpoints and bringing them to you in one place, in one concise manner for you to absorb gradually. You can even replay the video. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in a dystopian world where the media, well, they're powder puffs and cheerleaders and they barely report on anything. We do the hard work here for you so you don't have to do it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Be safe. We love you. We've got an eye on La Cumbre Vieja. Anyone?